What's going on YouTube? Back here with a brand new video. Today, I am installing the Radeon RX 560 into my 2010 Mac Pro. Now, in order to install the RX 560, which is natively supported in macOS Sierra, um, you will need to be running macOS Sierra version 10.12.6 or later. This will not work on any previous versions. No, not 10.12.5 or anything less, it needs to be exactly 10.12.6. Now, the reason I bought this card was because I'm in school right now for video editing, and my classes require some pretty intensive stuff. We're using uh, cameras like the Sony RX100 Mark V and a Sony FS7 and all that stuff, so it's pretty intensive stuff. So what I tried to originally do was buy an RX580 and have two of those, but you know it's kind of impossible to have an RX580 right now since the prices are so high and you know miners have bought up all the rx 580s so what i did was i ordered two of these this is the first one the second one will be here on monday if so i have another video about installing that so without further ado let's get started on installing the, the graphics card all right so like i said before you're going to need a mac running mac os 10.12.6 um you can run this on Macs, I think, from 2008 to 2010, I believe. I'm not sure. I believe you have to do some kind of hacking to get the 2008 one to work. But anyway, um, another thing you have to do if you're running an NVIDIA card, uh, you have to disable the NVIDIA web drivers by going to the toolbar and selecting the uh, Mac OS driver option. So let's go ahead and get started with the install. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug my PCIe power, ca bleh, power cable. Come on. All right, and the version I got, the ITX version, doesn't even require a uh, power, ca power cable anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it evenly on both sides and just pull it out. And here it is, the good old GTX 960 that's been in my Mac Pro since, <laughs> since it came out, really. And put that off to the side. All right, now here is the RX 560. Get to a better angle there. As you can see, it's a really pretty decent card. Looks nice. So, let's put it in the bottom slot. Just like that. And that's it. This model does not require a PCIe power connector. Um, some models do, some models don't. I know the Asus Strix version does, um, but I'm pretty sure all the other ones do not. Uh, that's another reason why this makes such a great option for the Mac Pro. So. Now that it's installed, we're going to go ahead and start taking a look at some of the benchmarks of this card. I ran a few. I ran, I think it was, yeah, let's just go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks. All right, so here we are at the benchmarks. The first benchmark I ran was the Bruce X benchmark. The Bruce X benchmark is a Final Cut profile that allows you to see how fast your graphics card is based on the export of a 5K timeline. So, as you can see by the graph, I benchmarked the RX 560, the Radeon 5770, and the GTX 960. Now, compared to the 960, the RX 560 almost cut the time in half of the uh, 5K export time. As you can see, the 5770 is just a little bit faster than the 960, but not very, not by very much. Um, now, what this translates to in real-world performance is basically cutting my export times in half. So... Next test I ran is the Luxmark version 3.0 Luxball OpenCL test. Now the higher score is better here. Now as you can see, the 960 actually came pretty close to the RX 560 in this test. Um, now this is just a benchmark about OpenCL performance, which NVIDIA cards generally aren't very well, but they do do okay, as you can see with the 960 keeping up with the RX 560 pretty well, and then the 5770 being last. The next test I performed was in Unigen Heaven Benchmark version 4.0. Uh, the settings I used was 1080p high at two times anti-aliasing. Anti -aliasing. Now, as you can see here, the GTX 960 absolutely destroyed the RX 560 in this test. Um, now, obviously, the RX 560 isn't as good as a gaming card, even today, as the GTX 960 is. Um, as you can see, with an overall score of 681 on the RX 560 and an overall score of 1,204 on the 960. Um, and frames per second wise, you're looking at an average of 27 on the 560, 47 on the 960. Um, 50 
max on the RX 560 was 154.4 max on the 960. And then minimum frames per second is 17.5 and 9 on the RX 560 and 960. All right, so as you can see, the RX 560 is going to offer a significant performance increase in Final Cut Pro uh, with my school projects and YouTube, hopefully in the future. Um, you know, the RX 560 really isn't a gaming card by any means. Well, it is and isn't, but um, I'm not really doing any gaming, so the RX 560 is the obvious choice here. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you like videos like this. I'll have plenty more. Uh, I have a second RX 560 coming in the future, probably on Monday or Tuesday, so expect a video on that in the near future. Thank you guys for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you later.